Hello and welcome to this video in which we are going to uh, analyze the forces in the boom, the arm, and this linkage as this excavator lifts up this large underground storage tank. So um, this is an example of a fairly complicated machine. It has several different moving parts. Uh, we've got the linkage over here. We actually have a pin here. We've got the arm we've got the boom and so for each of these parts we will do a free body diagram and analyze forces to um, to get started uh, what I did is I took this picture and from this picture I came up with the following schematic representation of the stuff we want to analyze and I won't uh, force on you all the details here uh, if you uh, need to later on in the video you might refer back to this to make sure you know which point we're working with and so on but basically what I did was I assigned an X and Y position to each of the points where we either have a linkage a pin actually all of these are pins with the exception of this point here which is where the the tank load is attached and I labeled each of the pins well actually I guess I'm wrong there too um, this is the point where the center of gravity of the arm is and this is the point where the center of gravity of the boom is. With the exception of those uh, points we have uh, everything else is a pin. And so uh, we will go ahead and uh, try to do a static um, analysis of this and see what the forces are at each of the pin joints. Okay, um, one thing we'll need as we go along are these position vectors and I uh, arbitrarily imposed a XY coordinate system uh, which you can see in the previous graphic and then using that XY coordinate system I got the uh, position vectors from the origin to each of the points that we defined and these position vectors will be necessary as we go through the analysis. Uh, they basically will give us relative position of different points as we're computing moments and so on. Okay, so finally let's state our goals. Well, first off the loads. Uh, the tank itself weighs 300 or 30,000 pounds. Uh, we'll assume that the arm weighs 12,000 pounds and the boom weighs 24,000 pounds. These are numbers that are roughly um, characteristic of the weights of real uh, parts of excavators. And we'll assume all other components will have negligible weight and it turns out that that's not that bad an assumption and in fact the analysis that I've seen before um, assumes that the arm and the boom are weightless as well which seemed to me to be kind of crazy to think that you could uh, have a 12 ton boom uh, that doesn't contribute uh, dramatically to the uh, analysis but it turns out it really doesn't. We could have uh, ignored the the boom in the arm and gotten pretty close to the same the same result. Okay, so our goal is to find all of the forces in the hydraulic cylinders. That is, uh, each hydraulic cylinder exerts a tension or a compression, and we want to find out what that is. And then we also want to find the reaction forces at all the joints. So we want to know if we were uh, thinking about designing one of these things. Uh, we'd, this would give us a rough idea of how much um, uh, how much force we would need to be able to generate and the reaction forces at the joints. Um, now I am going to go through this in, in order to get through this at all in uh, less than uh, the amount of time that it would you know in less than forever. I'm not going to show any of the computations I make. I will show the values that I'm computing with and show the equations that I'm computing with but I'm not going to actually show doing the computations. If you find this to be uh, troubling uh, then I'd suggest that you watch a couple of the other analysis videos of machines and um, other uh, 2D static analyses and that should help you to understand what the computations are but it, it just seems to me like um, 
I, putting this whole thing together has taken more than a day for me, and I can imagine that uh, trying to pack that into a couple 15-minute videos would be pretty painful. Um, as an aside, uh, this pretty much reminds me why I don't like to do these sorts of problems by hand. Uh, it gets uh, it is both uh, tedious and error prone, uh, as I have demonstrated by taking a whole day um, yesterday to get this whole thing set up. Okay, so what I will talk about is strategies and why we make decisions the way we do, why we choose to look at particular pieces of the system first, and so on. So hopefully that will be helpful when you start to work with complex systems to see the strategies, and I'm assuming that you're already capable of doing the detailed computations. So let's go back to our picture. Um, the uh, components that we will uh, do the analysis of will be this linkage here. I'm sure there actually is a better name for that, but it looked like a linkage to me, so that's what I called it. Um, and for each of these uh, things that I point out, we'll do a free body diagram. We need to do this pin here. You'll notice that it's connected, uh, or that it only has two force members connected to it, which means that we can just look at the pin, and that will tell us what we need to know. Uh, we then have this arm, and then we have this boom. Okay, and for each of these, we'll draw a free body diagram. We will uh, use the fact that the sum of moments about an arbitrary point is zero, and we'll choose that arbitrary point to make computations as easy as possible, and we'll use the fact that the sum of the forces in the x and y direction are zero to uh, solve for unknowns. Okay, now the question that you might be asking, and that I certainly asked when I first started this, is which of these components to do first? Uh, do we want to do the boom? Do we want to do the arm, this joint, or whatever? And I looked at this linkage and came to the conclusion that it would make the most sense to do this linkage first for the following reason. Uh, the unknowns in this linkage are the magnitude of the force exerted um, on the linkage by this uh, link here. As well, and, but I know the direction because it's a two force member, so all I need is the magnitude, as well as uh, the force exerted at this pin right here. So the unknowns here would be the magnitude of this force and the x and y components of this force. So I have three unknowns. With a free body diagram in two dimensions, I actually will have three equations for those three unknowns. And so that's why I chose that guy. I'll be able to then solve for the um, for this tension and then uh, this unknown force. Then I'll work to this pin where I'll have two tensions that are unknown. Uh, a pin gives you two equations because you don't have the moment equation, but those two equations will be enough to solve for the tensions here and here. And then I'll be able to go to the arm where the unknowns then will be the tension here as well as the force exerted by this pin. At that point, I'll know the tension here because I've solved for it here. I'll know the tension here. I've solved for it here. I'll know the reaction force here. And that finally will then give me um, uh, the information I need to solve the boom. I'll have a tension or a compression, in this case, applied here, as well as the joint forces here, which will be three unknowns. I'll have, again, three equations, and we'll be able to solve them. So that's the approach. We'll start with this linkage, then do the pin, then do the arm, then do the boom. And the reason for doing that is that each, if we do it in this order, then for each free body diagram, we will not have more unknowns than we have equations, and we'll be able to solve for the unknowns as we go through, uh, go through the uh, free body diagrams. If we went the opposite direction, we would start off here with this joint force unknown, this tension unknown, this tension unknown, and this joint force here unknown. So I would have um, basically six unknowns, two tensions and two x and y, uh, two forces each with an x and y component, but I'd only have three equations. So I would then have to go to the arm, uh, get um, uh, the new unknowns would be the tension here and the joint force. 
So at that point, I'd have nine unknowns with six equations. Uh, so, so basically, if I start with the boom, then I can't solve everything until I end up with coupled systems of equations. So again, that's why we start over here. OK, so with that introduction, let's go ahead and start with the linkage. And the first thing I want to do, of course, is draw a free body diagram. I know that from point N, I will have the weight of the tank, which is 30,000 pounds. I know that I will have the tension in this linkage. So I know its direction, but I don't know its magnitude, and since this links from point A to point C out here, I'll call this TAC. And then I will also need the uh, reaction force applied to point B by the arm. And so this I'll call, um, let's see, we probably might want to call that, uh, I'll say F sub B. And I'll denote this as a vector to indicate that I know neither the magnitude nor the direction of this guy. So I need to solve then for this tension and the components of F sub B. OK. Well, um, to begin with, I will compute the moments about the point B. The reason I want to do it about B is if I compute it about B, then the components of F sub B uh, don't show up in the equation because the moment of F sub B about B is 0. So it will give me one equation that relates the moment generated by the tank and the moment generated by TAC. That one equation will allow me to solve for TAC. Then I can say the sum of the forces here equals 0, and I'll be good. But unfortunately, I've run out of time, so we'll have to actually start the detailed solutions in the next video.